welcome to the Life After Plus One podcast, where we turn life's lemons into delightful lemonade. Get ready for inspiring stories, uplifting conversations, and all the tips and tricks to rock your single parent journey with style. I'm your host, Leanne, and it's time to embrace the adventure of Life After Plus One. So let's dive in. Hello, hello, welcome back to Life After Plus One. I'm Leanne, your podcast host and your single parent mentor and coach. And today I want to talk about one of those really frustrating topics that we deal with as a single parent. And it's not what you think it is because there's lots of frustrating topics. Well, actually, you probably know because you've seen the topic title. And that's online dating. Online dating. Seriously, we all kind of need it in a way because how else do you meet people but we all hate it don't we there's not many people out there that are actually loving it so let's dive into the topic of online dating and what can we do differently to enjoy the process and maybe actually learn to get out of our little comfort zone bubble now the biggest things that you see people complain about when it comes to online dating is one they're all fakes everyone's fake they're all scamming you Nobody replies to your message. People are lying in their profile or they're just not putting any information at all. Quite often you see people just write, just ask me. No, dude, you've got to put yourself out there. Another thing is people are getting bombarded with messages for fuck buddies. And if you want that, that's fine. But quite often they're approaching people who don't want that. So how do you get through this? Now, I think the biggest thing we all need to remember here when you're managing the world of online dating, everyone in life has their own opinions and their own beliefs. Look on Facebook and how people just butt heads and how people get so triggered by other people. This is life in general. And we don't have to always deal with this in our daily lives because We can choose who we associate with. We can choose who we want to spend our time with. When it comes to the world of online presence, whether it's through social media or dating, you're dealing with people from all different walks of life and most of them are not people who you would probably associate with on a daily basis. This is what adds in the challenge. And you've got to be open-minded and prepared that you're going to come across a large portion of people that just aren't your cup of tea. Because in life, we're not everyone's cup of tea. We might think we're fine, our friend groups think we're fine, and we think our our friends are fine. But we're not everyone's best friend. Not everyone is going to like us. Not everyone is going to see our point of view, even if we're not coming from a bad place. Not everyone gets that. And then it's saying goes with them. They may not think that they're doing anything wrong, but in our eyes, maybe we think that they are. This is just life in general. You're not going to be everybody's cup of tea. And when you're putting all of this together in the world of online dating, it's chaos. It really is. There's no filter. There's no... I mean, there is filters and you can choose age groups and you can choose location, but you can't tell what someone's personality is like just off a photo. That's why it's so difficult. And people just quickly forget that there's more to a person than just their looks. And I know there are people out there that are happy to take it further than that and don't prioritize their search purely on looks. But a lot of people do. A lot of people you don't even get a look in if you don't reach that beautiful social media expected image of what should be. So that in itself makes it hard. You've got people out there lying about possibly their age, their occupation and other things in their life because maybe they're trying to fulfill that expectation that's been put out there through social media. Maybe they're wanting to be something more. Maybe they feel like they're not good enough in themselves. So they're putting something different to make themselves feel better. Is that right? Definitely not because you don't want a person that's going to be lying straight off the bat because if they're lying about that, then what else are they lying about? But you've also got to take into consideration that if someone is lying about this, it's not because they're wanting to shit on you or because they're wanting to take the piss out of you. 
They're lying because clearly they feel insecure in themselves and they're doing that as a way to feel better in a way to feel happier in themselves because they're wanting to make it look like they have more than what they do. And it is a little bit sad because you don't want people that are going to judge you like that. If you feel the need to have to change your profile to accommodate someone else or to make someone else want to like you, then that's not right. You need to step back from the dating world if that's where you're at. Because you want someone that's going to like you for who you are. And if you're worried that you're not going to find your right person or you're worried that they're not going to like you for who you are, then if you're going to have to force yourself to change or force yourself to be someone else, then why do you think they're going to like you when they're lying or sorry, when you're lying about who you are? It's better to be open and honest. And if they don't like you for who you are, then that's okay. They're not your person. Eventually that person will come. But you've got to remember, there's no time limit on finding the right person. Hell, I've been single for years and I'm okay with that. I have people that have questioned me and why and do you know what? I'm okay. I'm not complaining. The right person will come at the right time for me and I'm quite comfortable knowing that. I'm not actively looking and it's not an issue for me being single. I am happy being single and I'm loving the fact that I can live my life my way. But I will get back into the dating world. I will meet my partner. I know that for a fact, but I'm not putting a time limit on it. I'm not giving it a time frame. It'll come when I'm ready and when they're ready at the right time. And I'm happy to roll with that. So don't put some unrealistic expiry date on when you should meet somebody. Go with the flow and let it happen naturally. And so when it comes to online dating, you've got to remember, don't take things personally. You're going to meet a lot of people that are not your cup of tea. You're going to come across a lot of people that respond to things in ways that you wouldn't, that would ask you questions that are totally inappropriate and are just complete dickheads. And that could be male or female. You're going to come across those people because there's no filter, no way to shut that out until that you actually approach them or vice versa, they approach you and you realize, oh shit, you're a fuckwit, see you later. But you can't be offended by that and you can't be put off by that factor because like I said, people like that are around every day. They're in our lives, they're in the world, they exist and they exist in every part of the world which includes online dating. So you can't just sit up and go, okay, well, fuck it. I'm done with online dating because I keep getting someone that just wants a fuck friend or I keep getting someone that's just an idiot or people that don't know how to start a conversation. Because to be honest with you, that's one thing that really grinds me. People that just message and say hi. And I've tested that a few times just to see how it goes. And so I just respond and say hi back. I give them the same energy that they're going to give me. And they go, how was your day? Good. How was yours? Good. You got much planned for the weekend? It's like, fuck, seriously? Are we 10? What kind of conversation is this? I've got a huge profile, heaps of pictures there, enough information for you to work off and ask me a question based on that. And you're just going to say, hi, how was your day? What do you got planned for the weekend? And that's always how it goes when someone initiates contact with a hi. For me, I'm all about having that emotional connection. If someone can't trigger that and that's all they can do is say hi, well, what kind of quality conversation are we going to be having? So for me, when someone initiates contact with confidence and can put in an put in some form of effort with a message that acknowledges your photos or acknowledges your bio, acknowledges something in your profile and can make a conversation out of that, that for me is a huge tick. That's a turn on. They're putting in the effort. They've actually read your profile, they've acknowledged it, and now they're going to start a conversation about it. That's nice. Not just someone that says hi. To me, that's just someone that's just wanting a bit of attention. They're bored, they're lonely. Let's just say hi, see if she's interested. She's interested said she might say hi back if she's not then oh well next person that's zero effort I am not giving my time or energy to someone that's putting zero effort in like I said I will match the energy that's given to me so that's another reason why I'm not very active because I just get high 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 straight up by I don't say that I don't even respond you want to put in the energy and I've said this countless times on previous episodes that are related to dating If you're wanting to meet someone, you do have to put a bit of effort in. It's not just let's set up a profile, 
put on the profile, just ask, put a couple of snaps of me where my ex-girlfriend's cut off so you've got half a picture, couple of my dog and a sunset. Dude, you've got a phone. You walk around with it. Just take a couple of selfies. Ideally not ones that you've just stepped out of the shower with your towel around your waist where it's as low as possible where we can pretty much see your old mate hanging out. That's not classy. Keep that for later down the track. You know, if if you're looking for a one night stand, then yeah, do photos like that. But if you're looking for something serious, just sit in your backyard, go to the beach, take a couple of selfies. It's not that hard. But put that effort in. Put a bit of effort in because I guarantee you, if you're looking for a quality partner and that's what you're doing, you're just reaching out saying hi or you're not putting any effort into your bio or to your photos then I guarantee that person that you're reaching out saying hi to is going to match your energy. And then if you're going to sit back and go, well, why do they not respond to me? Why don't they get back to me? I'm sick of people not responding to my messages. Are you putting effort into the message that you're sending? And there are people that do. There are people that do put effort into it and they do send some great messages. But you're not going to be everyone's cup of tea. You're not going to, just because they've put effort into their message doesn't mean they're right for you. But that's the hard thing. How do you know they're not? They might be. You've got to give them a chance. Maybe start up that conversation. But going back as well to what I was originally discussing. So a lot of people are put off by online dating because they say it's full of fake people and it's full of scammers. Let's be honest. Is that an online dating problem or is that a problem of the world today? I think it's more option B. Scammers and fake people are everywhere. It's not just online dating. They will call you, they will text you, they will email you, they will do anything possible to find a way to scam money out of people who are vulnerable. They will go to Marketplace, they will go to all these different Facebook pages and do what they can. And yes, they prey on vulnerable people on online dating sites who they think that they can pretend to be their perfect match and give them all the company in the world and do everything and the next minute, boom, they've scammed them out of gift cards and everything else, which someone asks you to buy them to buy them something on online dating, then that's immediate red flag, an immediate block and an immediate report if you ask me. But don't be put off on online dating because there are scammers. Because like I said, they are everywhere. You've just got to know how to filter it. Don't take it personally. Unfortunately, these fuckwits just milk every method possible to try scam people and the only way to stop it is not just to stop your life which is maybe dating but to try and stop them report them yes they will keep setting up fucking other profiles that's what they do because clearly they've got no other fucking life than to try get money out of other people you just think to yourself mate if you just got a fucking real job you wouldn't have to be doing this and that's what i think maybe it's not that easy where they're from but who knows but just keep reporting them Because yes, they do exist. It's 2024. Everything is about online, the world of online. They're there. It's going to happen. So don't just go, oh, I can't do online dating because there's fake people and there's scammers. Well, if you know they're scammers, then simple. Block them, report them, don't respond to them. And it's pretty obvious. You can spot a scammer straight away and you know that. And I've had... So many messages from people that I've just looked at their profile and I've known straight up, this profile is fake. It's fake. And that's what they do. They put these beautiful, well-groomed photos where they look immaculate. But let's be honest, they're not even their photos. There's a thing you can do, holy shit, what's it called again? Where you can search photo images online. You can get that photo and you can search it. And I've done that a few times before and it was from some modeling guy and I don't even know where it's from but I knew straight up as soon as I saw it I'm like this is a fake profile I can tell because just by the way he messaged me and just his bio it didn't match it didn't correlate with anything in his pictures and usually like for example if you've got some guy that loves going to the gym and all his photos are shirtless and they're all photos of him at the gym but then his bio is talking about how he loves cats and all this stuff that you just wouldn't expect you just look at it and go hmm this doesn't match you're putting these photos up just to try and get a girl's attention and then you're trying to write this bio which you think's going to get girl's attention but it actually doesn't match with your photos so that's one way how they try and scam you so just be smart with that be smart
And it goes with the online world in general, with Marketplace, with Facebook. You know, people just prey on messages. You see them pop up in posts all the time trying to sell stuff, trying to, you know, they act like they're selling a whole house of furniture and they put that up there, message me for photos. Fuck, mate, you know that's bullshit. So it's just about being smart. You don't have to quit the world of online dating just because there's some fake people or there's scammers out there. You just have to be smart in the way you approach it and don't let it bother you. Like, do, are you going to give up your social media completely because there's fake people on social media? Are you going to give up your phone because fake people call you and text you and email you? I don't think so. So why give up on online dating? Just got to be smart with how you manage it. Now, we also need to remember that when we are interacting with hundreds, if not thousands of people online in the online dating world, you're dealing with people who are not people who would normally be in your social circle. And it's tough because, as I said earlier, you're dealing with people that handle things in a very different way that you do and you don't like that. Maybe too upfront, maybe quite rude sarcastic, whatever it is, it's not your cup of tea. But you've got to learn to filter that and not take that process personally. If you see someone that may be too upfront or too direct, then maybe bring it to their attention. If you see someone that's too sarcastic, then maybe try not to take that so personally. Because I can't imagine people are reaching out with the intentions of pissing you off. Maybe their message did, but I can't imagine that was their intention. But if it did and it's not your style of communication, it's something that you don't appreciate, then just move on. Move on. It's just like in the workplace or wherever we go, we're going to find people that are not our cup of tea. You've got to learn to deal with it. And the biggest thing as well that we need to keep in mind And a lot of people deny this fact, but there's a lot of people on there with baggage. And I hate that word. I do. I don't like that word. But let me rephrase that then. There's a lot of people on there with past hurt that they choose not to do anything about. They may have been cheated on. They may have been lied to. They may have been blindsided. Anything could have happened that we don't know from their past. And they're using those insecurities as a barrier for their next relationship. And that's what's holding them back. So you do get a huge amount of people on there that are guarded or they're sarcastic because that's their self-defense mechanism. They're defending themselves so they don't get hurt. So they might be being sarcastic. And that's another reason these days why you get so many people out there that are just wanting friends with benefits. Because they tell you they don't want to go into a relationship because they don't want to get hurt again. So they find the easy way out is to just find a friend with benefits. I think that's the sneaky easy way out or the cheats way out because they're not dealing with anything. So if they're avoiding getting hurt again, then clearly they're still carrying that hurt from their past. They're choosing to hide it. They're choosing to not deal with it. They're choosing to sweep it under the carpet and pretend like it's not there. And then just go find someone that they can have fun with. Is that what you all want in life? You Or do you want a quality partner? I know I would much rather put the time and effort in. And if you're wanting that, then why sweep those past issues under the carpet? Why not sort that out? Look into that. Why is that still hurting you? And what's happened that's still hurting you? And what can you do to fix that so you can move on from that? So it doesn't affect you in the past and maybe it can encourage you to not look for just a one night stand, but you can look for something with a bit more substance. Because agree with me or not here, but one night stands still involve emotions. Whether it's one person, whether it's both, someone's going to get emotionally connected and someone will get hurt at some point. Unless you can both manage to have zero emotion and zero connection and zero care factor, then maybe you won't get hurt. But quite often, there's always that one person that will still get hurt in that scenario. And if you are looking to do that, then that's because you're not looking at healing yourself. You're not looking at getting past all that shit that you've been through in the past. And this is the biggest problem with the online dating world. You've got all these people there, thousands and thousands of people in this pool of single people that are filled with friggin' baggage and baggage and baggage from their past that just piles on after each relationship. It's all now just fucking excess baggage because no one's wanting to sort it out. 
And I shouldn't say no one because there are people out there who do. There are a lot of people who take the time out for themselves and focus on what exactly they want. They look at what went wrong and they look at what they can do differently. But if you're just someone that's been hurt and you've been fucked over and you're fed up, but then you just keep going back into the dating world, what relationship are you going to attract? And you're now filling up this online dating world with all these people that are hurt and upset and so negative towards the opposite sex. Like you see even on these single pages, all these smart ass memes that are directed to the opposite sex. It's like, buddy, you're on a fucking singles page and you haven't had a dig towards females When you're a single person trying to attract a female, what is this saying about you? What kind of person are you going to attract when you're doing this? All this tells me is that you're carrying a lot of fucking hurt here, buddy. And usually when people are handling situations with sarcasm, that's their way to try and protect themselves. Let's put it on the other person so they don't see my faults. Let's not talk about what's wrong with me, but let's talk about what's wrong with women. Because I don't want to talk about what happened to me. I'm just going to stay single and pretend like I don't have any issues. And eventually I'll find someone and then we'll just go down that same path again. So this is one of the biggest issues with online dating. And you've got to remember, don't take anything personally. Take it all with a grain of salt. Have an open mind because that person is out there. That one person is out there and there's probably someone on the opposite sex or the same sex, whatever you're looking for, that's in there going, fuck, where's my person? Where's my person? Where are they? And then here you are saying the same thing. Eventually you will meet up. They're out there. I can promise you that. But you're not going to find them if you give up and you're not going to find them if you keep being negative about the dating world. Yes, the dating world is hard. Yes, it's complicated because as you get older, you've been through more and more shit. When you're in your 20s or you know late teens or whatever it is, you haven't been through as much in life. Your life experience is a lot less than what it is when you get to your 40s and 50s. I'm not saying they don't know anything about life, but realistically, they haven't gone through as much in life as what we have because we've been through 20, 30 years more shit and more trauma and more hurt. And um, it's not a competition here. I'm not trying to compare age groups as to who's more hurt than the other, but you're carrying all that hurt along with you. And a lot of it even stems from your childhood and you're still carrying it on, you're carrying it on, you're carrying it on and then you go to a relationship and you get hurt and then maybe there's something you're pissed off from when you're younger but now you've got to add on to that relationship and you've gone out and dated again and that fell through and now you're adding that relationship onto your hurt and it just piles up and then you're dealing with your co-parenting issues and maybe custody battles and then that hurt piles on top and you haven't dealt with anything. You're just deep down pissed off and angry at the world nothing's done to resolve anything and then you've just gone into the dating world with this negative mind frame because you're still hurt from your exes and anything else that's happened. But just because your exes have hurt you or you've been hurt from that scenario, it doesn't mean that you're going to necessarily get hurt again. But it's not going to help if you're going to go into this with a negative mind frame. And I always say, If you go into something with a negative mind frame, you're going to attract a negative experience. Positive attitudes attract positive experiences. It's like if you go into a situation and you say, I can't, I can't, I can't do this. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. You're not going to enjoy it. You're just going to find any negative situation possible, anything negative to pick at and complain at. Whether it be something in someone's photo, whether it be something they said, you'll just find something to nitpick at. But if you're a little open-minded and you have a positive attitude about it and you're willing to look at it as a fun experience, then you'd be like, yeah, okay, cool. They seem nice, but not my cup of tea. That's okay. And you won't get offended if someone is not right for you because you're not going to be everybody's perfect match. It's just not possible. And you don't want to be everybody's perfect match. Now, there really is no change in this because the online world is here to stay. It's not going anywhere unless the dating platforms get a lot more strict on their rules. I can't see that happening. I don't know because I don't know how they can change that. But it's here to stay. The only thing that can change is your outlook on it. Are you going to go set up a dating profile and think, oh, I can't be fucked. I don't know if I want to do it, but fuck, I will just do it and hope that maybe something good will come my way. 
what's going to go good if you just have that attitude? But if you go in with a positive mind frame and think, fuck, I'm a little bit nervous, but hey, I'm going to give it a go and see what happens. And you put a bit of effort into setting up your profile. You make an effort to put a decent bio so people know a little bit about you. And maybe if someone sees you and they are interested in approaching you, then they can refer to something from your bio, not just maybe the one or two pictures that show very little of you. And how are they going to approach that? It's like I had someone message me not that long ago. And like I said, I'm not active on there much. But every now and then I'll jump on just to see if there's messages. And there was one person, he had zero bio and there was one photo of him. And you couldn't see him because it was far away photo. You couldn't even see a close up of him. If he walked past me in the street, I wouldn't even know that was him because it was that far away. And it's not about me judging on appearance. I had no idea what he was like, how old he was, where he lived. And he had no description in his bio. I'm like, I need to, how am I supposed to respond to this? I don't know what to say. I need to have something to connect with. And you can say it's judgy or you want, but it goes back to saying you want to find your right person. You want to find someone you click with. And it's not going to be everyone that's in the online dating world. And that's your way of filtering down people. You're not going to waste your time messaging every single person to see if they're the ones that are right for you. So you filter it through the people that either make contact with you or that you make contact with them and you choose that by their bio description and by their photos because when you can't speak to them first, then that's what you're going off. Photos aren't just about looks. Photos tell a lot about a person from their hobbies. It could show them doing a certain activity on holidays, anything that they, something that they're doing in their spare time, a hobby like gardening or cricket or anything. It shows a lot about that person, whether they like bike riding or motorbikes or gym or whatever else. Quite often you see their gym photos and guys on their bikes and motorbikes and fishing and it tells you a little bit. You might be someone that just ho- totally hates people that go to the gym and you someone sends you a gym self, you're like, mm, not for me. And I'm not making judgments because I go to the gym myself. So I'm just saying there could be people out there that are like that. So it does help initiate where you stand. I mean, I personally wouldn't decline a person just based on a hobby, but it does help to determine whether or not that could be a match for you. And another thing is you've got to be open-minded It's very easy to have your specific set standards, whether it be weight, height, hair color, age, kids, location, whatever it is. Be flexible. Now, when I say be flexible, I don't mean lower your standards. That's a very different story. I don't think anyone should ever lower their standards when it comes to the dating world. And that is all part of the process of looking after you and growing and learning from your past. You've set your standards and you're putting boundaries in place based on experiences that you've been through in the past. And those standards are there so you don't go down that same path again. Don't ever lower your standards. They're there for a reason and they're there to protect you because you're worth more than going down that path again. Having an open mind and being flexible with your expectations is a little different. Do you need to judge someone based on their height? Does it matter where they live? Does it matter if they're a couple of years younger or a little bit older than that age bracket that you're looking at? Does it matter about their weight? These things are things that can always be changed. And I'm not saying that you need to meet someone and go and change them. But I'm saying, for example, you might meet someone and they might live two hours away and you think there's no way that's going to work. No way. I'm not even going to bother talking to them. There is no way. But you might start talking to them and you might find out that they've got family that live in your area. and Maybe later down the track, planning on moving down to be closer to their family. You just don't know what could happen. But in saying that, if you do speak to someone that is that far away... Be upfront from the get-go. If you have zero intentions on ever moving and you do speak to someone that's two hours away, then let them know. Just say, hey, listen, I'd love to get to know you more, but you don't have to mention that in the first chat and you don't have to cut it off in the first chat or you don't even have to avoid communication completely just because of their location. Get to know them. Get to know them. They may travel a lot for work and they may be in your area or you may travel a lot. You, anything could happen. You just don't know. Or you might realize, well, fuck, it's not that far away. Way. And actually, it probably works out good because it gets me my time to myself during the week. I want to have a partner, but hey, during the week, I still get my alone time with just me and my kids. And then 
when my daughter's at her dad's house, then I can spend that time with them. So I get time with them, I get time with my daughter, and I still get time to myself. So it may work out as a win-win that they don't live on your doorstep. And then who knows, you might have times where they can come down and stay with you or you can stay with them. So I think it's very important to not brush off such set criteria or expectations of what you're looking at in another person. Be open-minded. You just don't know. These are things that we all need to be a little bit open-minded with when it comes to the online dating world. Don't have such strict expectations, but don't lower your standards. Now, it is quite easy to get the shits with it and get frustrated or just sit on online dating and just meaningless, just swipe, but you're swiping no, 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 no. No, stop. And look, if you are actually interested to meet someone and you're wanting to have a partner, then put that effort in. Put it in. Stop. Read it and go, okay, I don't know if I'd stop if I walk past them in the street, but let's have a read. I might like their lifestyle. I might be interested in them. Because quite often you hear people that are matched up with people or meet someone and you hear stories like, I would have never have gone for this person if I met them in real life, but they've turned out to be the most amazing couple ever. That's quite a common scenario to hear, which is more of a reason why we should be open-minded when it comes to the online dating world. Don't just sit there and go, no, no, no. Have a look. Have a look at their location. Have a look at their bio. If they have got a good bio and they have got a good selection of photos, which tells a bit about the person and that does spark your attention, then reach out and if they don't reply don't get upset because maybe they're still in that phase and maybe they might think oh I don't know they're too far away or this is maybe they're not opening up their expectations you just don't know what's going on and it's so hard and that's just it everyone tries to wonder what the other person is thinking why didn't they respond why didn't they get back to my message you don't need to worry everyone has their own reasons and a lot of the times and people aren't responding One, because they're just not interested and that's okay. Or two, because maybe they're on online dating for the wrong reason. They're just looking for a bit of attention, looking to have a bit of fun and they've jumped on way too soon after their previous relationship and they're just swiping just for a bit of attention and see what comes up and see what sparks their attention. So when someone comes by and initiates a really lovely conversation, they're like, oof, I don't have the energy for this. But you know, you know straight away when someone is wanting something serious or when someone's wasting your time usually you can tell and you do get people that ask that a lot what are you after what are you looking for oh my gosh I've got the ice cream man coming hold that thought it's on back but don't get offended if people do ask that question because they've been hurt or they've been messed around they've met people that have screwed them over so you've got to remember that even though you're trying to protect yourself and you don't want to get hurt and you're trying to look for the right thing and someone that's not going to mess you around you've got to keep in mind that the other person is trying to do the same thing to themselves as well they're trying to protect themselves they don't want to get hurt they don't want to get screwed over unless they're just looking for a fun friend but they just wanting to protect themselves and let's be honest if they are just looking for a friend with benefit they are protecting themselves they are trying to avoid getting hurt and that's why they're just going down that path of just finding a friend with benefits but it does have an option of what you're looking for in a person are you looking for just friends are you looking for something serious are you looking for casual dating it does usually say this but it doesn't necessarily mean people have selected the right thing they might say that so don't get offended if someone does ask you that because they want to know they want to know are they going to waste their time talking talking to someone that's after something completely different. So it's okay to be upfront straight off the bat and say, what are you after? Or when someone asks you that question. So it's extremely important to be as clear as possible because this is the biggest problem used in life itself not just in online dating but in life in the world biggest problem we have if we have a falling out with someone it's because of lack of communication things are not communicated effectively there's sometimes more than that that's happened but quite often this is the main issue that's happened to create a falling out and that's why a lot of relationships fall apart because of there's been a communication breakdown in some point and when you're chatting to someone online you don't have your tone of voice or there's no expression or body language or anything else to go with it they're just going off things that you've written 
and there's nothing to go with that. And they don't know you personally. So they don't know your sense of humor. They don't know your tone. They don't know how you're meaning it. So be mindful of that. Be mindful that not everyone is going to have the same sense of humor as you. And it doesn't make them not funny. It doesn't make them not having a sense of humor because they don't laugh at your joke. They just don't know you well enough to understand where you're coming from. So keep that in mind. When you're communicating just online through text and through messaging, it's very different than to actually speak to someone over the phone or in person. So keep that in mind. And it does get quite difficult, especially when you're just getting those ones that just say, hi, how was your day? What have you been up to? How was your weekend? You know, that's nice, but it doesn't show that they're putting in any effort towards you. Are they showing that they care about you or they just bored? They just want to have a conversation and they're just hoping that you can spark the conversation because their conversation skills are shit. So it's got to go both ways. It's got to go both ways. They, You both have to put in the effort. You can't just reach out to someone with that shitty conversation skills and expect them to pick up the ball for you. So keep in mind the different communication skills that people have when you're messaging through writing only, through message only. Keep in mind that you might be writing something and thinking in your head this is funny and you might be thinking, oh, they're going to laugh at this. And they message you back with a serious response and you're thinking, what the fuck just happened? Because they don't see the humor. They didn't see the tone or the expressions or the body language or anything like that that came along with it and if they don't know you personally then it's common scenario to put your guard up if someone's messaging you and you don't know them and it can be taken in a way that's quite serious or not serious but not so funny and rude then straight up they're going to put their guard up and think who the fuck are you what do you want so just be cautious of that People are not seeing you. They're not seeing your body language. They're not seeing your expressions. They're not seeing or hearing your tone of voice. And they don't know how you react or relate to certain situations. And this is why I always usually put emojis with things. If I'm saying something that's a little bit funny, then I'll put laughy face laugh emoji that's relevant to it. So they get it. Okay, yeah, she's not being smart or she's not being rude. So if you're worried about that, then put a little emoji with it so they get it. But just keep that in mind. Everyone communicates very differently. And here's another fun fact to keep in mind. Did you know that our words make up 7% of communication, 7% and that's of effective communication. The rest, the 38% is our body language and 55% is your voice, your tone, when you pause. But see, when you're writing a message, you don't have any of that. And especially when the other person doesn't know you, it's very easy for them to put their guard up because they're confused by that. They don't understand where you're coming from or they they don't get the humor in it. So you've got to keep that in mind. Your words make up for 7% of your communication and they're not seeing the rest of that. So they've got to put that other 93% together in their head. And when they don't know you, they're just choosing it or deciding it themselves based on what you have written. So that's why it's so important to not just send a hi or to not be sarcastic without showing where you're coming from or be a little serious if need be, while you're getting to know someone. Not serious, serious, but you don't need to be smart-ass sarcastic in your messaging, especially when that other person doesn't know you. And smart-ass sarcastic is usually another defense mechanism. So this is why online dating is challenging. And it's not the world of online dating that's hard. It's the people that are in it that are not being open-minded enough to understand that everybody else in it is completely different to us. If you're going to go into an online world with people that are from a different background, from a different communication style or skills and everything about them is different, then you can't be surprised that when they approach you and they approach you in a way that you don't like. Because it's, they're just different to you. They're, and that's okay. And you don't have to go in there trying to change people or tell people how they should communicate. That's just their style. And unless they're willing to see that what they're doing is wrong, then that's up to them to sort out. I mean, you can pull people up. I have pulled people up before because he messaged me in a way that's saying, if I live closer, you'd cop it. Turns out he sent that message to multiple women because it's come up on a few different singles pages. Look at this message I got. I'm like, no way. He sent that same message to me and I did have to message him back. And I said, mate, if you approached a woman 
with the intent on actually getting to know her, you'd probably make some progress. But when you're messaging her purely for the sake of your dick, then you're going to get no. And clearly that's all he's been doing because he's sending this exact same cut and paste message to all these different women. But anyway, that's one instance that I did message him back and said, mate pick up your game that's not okay but that's not my job to change him it's not my job to fix him and you're going to get that online you're going to get people that message you in a way that you don't like that's their issues it's not for you to fix but this is what it comes down to online dating is not the problem it's everybody in it not being respectful of everybody that's different not being understanding of everyone's communication style not being willing to put in the effort to try hi how are you how how was your day? And that's done over three different messages. First you get the hi, then you get the how are you, then you get the how was your day or how was your weekend or that might be the fourth message later down the track. What are you doing for the weekend? What do you got planned for the weekend? Like mate, do you want to get to know me? Do you want to ask questions about me or is it just you're just bored and you're having this 10 year old chit chat? My daughter even has better conversations than this. Come on mate. So you've just got to put in the effort, put in the effort. If you're wanting to find someone, they don't just go, oh it's fucked, it's too hard, I'm ne- it's never going to work, I'm never going to find someone. What are you doing? What effort are you putting in? in are you being proactive are you just saying hi are you messaging them based on things in their profile or their pictures or something and just saying hey love your profile would love to chat and get to know you more that's nice it's kind of stock standard i've have received that a few times but it's still a bit of effort it's not just hi so put in the effort make an effort when you're communicating make an effort to understand the other person and be cautious of when you're messaging them that they may not understand your point of view. They may not understand your humor and where you're coming from because they don't know you. They don't see anything about you, your tone, your expressions, your body language. They're just seeing these words and putting the rest together themselves. So it's very important to be mindful of that. And if you want someone to see you in a good light and you're trying to impress someone, then be as clear, be as transparent as possible in your messaging. And if you're not one that likes a message, I don't. I hate message. I use to talk over the phone as early as possible. Some people don't like that. Me, I would much prefer to do that because you can tell straight away, if you can have a good phone conversation, then for me, that's a good thing. There's going to be no issues with communication. So it's nice to kind of know that quite early. I know there are a lot of people that don't don't like giving out their mobile phone numbers, especially very early. For me, I don't see what negative can come from that because if you don't get along, you can block someone. It's very easy to block a number. If you chat to someone and they turn out to be a, a creepo, block their number. They can't do anything. They can't scam you or do anything from you just by having your mobile number. Maybe I'm just too cautious, but I'm all about getting to know someone on an emotional level. And for me, writing, endless texting is not connection for me. It's just like, oh, I hate doing this. And it's also because I handle so many messages in the day. I'm constantly emailing and messaging. And so for me, when it comes to my personal messages, I don't want to just sit down when I'm finished working and sit down all night doing more messages. That's the last thing I want to do. So if I can sit down and talk to someone over the phone and not and just do other stuff at the same time, Some people might think it's rude, but you're still paying attention to the conversation. Then why not? I would much rather do that. Let's have a chat. I can go make school lunch at the same time or I can do a face mask at the same time or I can do something else. It's multitasking. It's what us women do. But I like to chat. So I'm going to wrap it up. I've had a long chat here today, haven't I? But I just want to say the point of this episode was to get across that don't give up on online dating. Don't and don't give up on dating as, as a whole because you've got to be open-minded about all the different people that are going to be in this online dating pool. It is swamped with people that are hurt, that are upset, that have got their guard up, that are not willing to disclose much information. You know, their their walls are up, they're protecting themselves and then they're trying to communicate with someone who's not giving them much information or they've got nothing in their bio and they've got minimal photos. So can you imagine that all together, how hard that will be? Trying to meet somebody in the world of online dating where you don't know who they are from a bar of soap. They've given you very little information and you've got to create a conversation around this. So put that effort in and be understanding of everybody's different communication styles and don't get all precious 
if they don't understand your humor or if they message you and you don't understand their humor because that's bound to happen. It's bound to happen. We all communicate very differently. And if they start doing that in a way that you're not liking, then maybe you could suggest, let's have a phone chat. And if it happens in the phone chat and you're not comfortable with their humor and you're not liking it, then that's when you'd pull the pin and say, oh, thanks for the chat, but I don't think this is right for me. But you might speak to them over the phone and you might see it in a very different light. You're like, ah, okay, that's where they were coming from. I get it. I get it. No hard feelings there. It's totally cool. It's not a big deal. So just keep that in mind. Don't let things slide or don't ignore things or don't shut it down, I should say, just because a couple of things that have happened that you've totally misunderstood. And there's a good chance a lot of these things you're misinterpreting and misunderstanding because you're still in the headspace of from your previous relationship. You're still hurting from the past. You're still upset and pissed off. So you're still protecting yourself and putting these barriers up and that's holding you back from getting to know someone openly and getting to know someone the way you should because you're so guarded. And then you're doing this in a way where you're just writing messages. It's like when you're kids and you pen pal. So put in the effort, talk about yourself, ask questions about the other person. And that is so important. When you're initiating contact with someone with these with the intentions to possibly date them, show interest in getting to know them. It's not a turn on when you start talking to them and you're just talking about you. I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this, me, 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 me. The whole idea is you're wanting to get to know the other person. It's not a a stage for you to tell everyone how amazing you are. And if you are amazing, that's great. But tone it down a bit and make an effort to get to know the other person because that's what it's about to put in the effort how was your day what did you get up to and in the early stages when you are getting to know them just focus on the generic stock standard questions how are you how was your day ask them questions about their life get to know them ask them about their siblings where they grew up where they went to school any goals in life what they plan on doing any holidays they have been on or planning on going on Ask them questions about them and you might get someone like me who can just talk and talk and talk and you'll end up having a conversation for an hour or two. And that's happened. I am quite the chatter when I'm on the phone and I have had a phone conversation with a guy for over three hours one time, but it did. And it ha- we had multiple conversations for that lengthy period. It didn't work out. I d- it just wasn't right for me, Just, but I just wasn't feeling it. I have boundaries, I have standards, and there was just something that raised a red flag with me and I didn't feel right in it because you want to protect yourself. And this is all about knowing your self-worth and knowing not to let yourself get walked over again. And that just all comes down to me saying again, You're not going to be everyone's perfect match. Just because you have a lovely phone chat together doesn't mean you're going to have a lovely life together. Those two don't necessarily make a match. You can have a lovely phone conversation, but then a month or two down the track, they could turn out to be the biggest jerk. I'm sure we've all been there because we're all single parents. We've all seen that happen. So don't be fooled by the smile and the lengthy chat. Now, I could honestly talk on this topic for hours. I could just talk and talk and talk. There's so much information I can share on this topic because it's a topic I'm very passionate about because you see it all the time. People giving up hope, people saying, no, it's shit. People saying, no, I'm not going to date again. People refusing to put in the effort. People refusing to do anything about themselves or look at what they can do to better themselves from experiences they've been through in the past. And it comes down to all of these things plus the fact that we've got all these different people in a different world all come together in one world of online dating where we're trying to communicate with them via message with next to no information about them and we're trying to initiate a conversation or vice versa and get to know this person it's difficult it's difficult it's like you go for a job interview and you send them your details and you say just ask you don't just ask, you put your information out there. Now, looking for a partner isn't like looking for a job, but you want to put yourself out there. If you want to find someone that you want to spend the rest of your life with, then why wouldn't you want to put that effort in? Why wouldn't you want to make your profile look good so when people see it, they go, oh, wow, fuck, they look amazing or they look really cool. He's got a fun life or she looks awesome. Wouldn't you want that? Because I can guarantee you now when I look at profiles that have got absolutely no information or it says just ask, they're a straight no for me. Why do you want me to message you to ask you when 
you've got the opportunity and the platform to do it there. So you want every woman to message you to see if maybe they might be interested and then just to find out, no, that's not what I'm looking for. So that really is expecting people just to judge you based on your photos because they don't know anything about you. And it's lazy. It's very lazy. So all of these things, I need to stop talking. Like I said, I just want to keep going on about it because I would just love to see people put that effort in and people realize it's not a shit platform. You're just dealing with sometimes a whole lot of shitty people that aren't willing to communicate effectively and aren't willing to understand other people's different communication styles and aren't willing to realize that when you're communicating with someone in writing it's very different than having them sitting next to you especially when they don't know you so be open-minded be open-minded have fun with it don't give up don't give up hope but just be cautious and just be aware that it is a very different world but when you don't take it so seriously when you learn to have fun with it, when you put in a little bit of effort, you can enjoy it. It can be a positive experience and you can meet some great people and have some great dates. But your mind frame plays a huge role in that. And if you've given up hope and you're not putting the effort in your profile, and you're not putting in any effort in the way you approach people, then you're not going to get that effort back. You, the effort you receive from someone is the effort that you're giving them. So food for thought, guys. I hope this has kind of maybe given you a different light or given you a different perspective of the dating world because it is a huge world and it can be messy, it can be ugly, but you've just got to be open-minded. So I hope this has given you something to use to your benefit for your future online dating experiences or just dating as a whole not just necessarily dating and if you do want to help on how to manage this dating world I do have a free dating worksheet it's a what's well, a workbook that you can work through in your dating experience and that's free and that's available online so it goes through a few different questions on where you're at and what you can do and things that you can do in yourself to make the experience a more positive one that's available on my website in addition to that I've also got my 135 page dating ebook which is available that's $7.99 jump on and grab that if you're interested it has so much juicy information it's got so much content on every aspect of dating that you can ever imagine and you might think oh fuck why do I need that for I know what I'm doing well because I want you to enjoy the process I want you to get the most out of it I don't want you to sit there and go this is shit I hate this I don't like it the idea of this ebook is to help you look at the dating world from a more positive perspective and to enjoy it and to look at what you can do within yourself to create a better version of you to create happier and healthier relationships and that's where it's about that's what it's all about and that's what life after plus one is about and that's what I'm here to do to empower you to enjoy your journey as a single parent and on that note I'm going to wrap it up. So I hope you got something from this. And always I'm open to receiving any feedback. If you have any questions, if you want to write a review, if you want to share the podcast, share it with your single parent friends. Let's empower single parents around the world and let's help them to see that single parenting is not a bad thing. There are positives in it. It's all about having that right mind frame and enjoying the time that you are in it, instead of focusing on the negative, we find the positive in it. All right, guys, thanks again. And until next time, I'll be in your ears then. Thank you for joining us on the Life After Plus One podcast. If you loved what you heard today and looking for some further support, then jump onto our website, lifeafterplusone.com. Plus, don't forget to check out our Instagram page for further resources and inspo. You can find all the links in the show notes. And remember, you're not alone on this path. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode. And in the meantime, keep thriving, keep growing, and keep exploring your amazing life after plus one.